Hi, I'm Rachel Garb, and I'm a UX manager for the Android operating system. I'm also the author of the material design spec for Android notifications, a topic near and dear to my heart. And it's what I'm here to talk about, when and how to use Android's notification system. Last fall, the Android team did ethnographic research on notifications and attention management. We did full and half-day observations of people going about their everyday lives using their smartphones. We did in-depth interviews, group discussions, and a whole lot of data analysis. Here's one of our biggest takeaways, the two kinds of notifications people appreciate the most. First, communication from people they care about. Second, well-timed reminders of things they have to do. It's not surprising when you consider that the name of our report from this research is I'm Just Trying to Survive. People want their smartphones and any interruptions that come with them to help them stay on top of their lives. This includes being there when an important person calls, texts, or emails. Now that's the receiver of the notification, but over here is the sender, the app team. As a whole, the app team's goal is to grow user engagement. Now, if I were to ask someone on an app team, they might phrase it a little differently. They might say that the goal is to deliver high value to users or create a product people love and depend on. But a key way that's measured is through user engagement. And on mobile devices, notifications offer a really convenient way for an app team to engage with users when they're not in the app, to bring them back, to help them discover new things, to keep the relationship going. So, welcome to the Android notifications ecosystem, where primary goals are a little bit out of sync. And just to make it even more complicated, I'll throw one more player into the mix, the Android system. This is my team. We want to help users and app teams both be successful in their respective primary goals and create a system that allows that to happen. But for the purposes of this talk today, we'll be focusing just on users and app teams. Let's begin with the basics of notification usage. When not to use a notification. Now, I suspect I'm going to be preaching to the choir here, but we'll get this quickly out of the way. First, cross-promotion. This one is so egregious that the Google Play Store has a policy about it, and if you're caught doing it, your app will get pulled down. Second, app has never been opened. The Android system actually prevents this, but it can't know whether the app was explicitly opened by the user, or maybe the user got to it in some other fashion, like clicking a link in a web browser. So wait for the user to explicitly open. Let them make the first move. Next, empty value. This one should be self-explanatory. Asking for app feedback. Don't interrupt the user to ask them how you're doing. Save that for when they're in the app. If they don't come back to the app, well, you probably have your answer. Oversharing technical details. Users don't need to know about the intricacies of how your app is working under the cover. Finally, false alarms. Don't bother the user unless their intervention is truly required to resolve a problem. By the way, these are all fictitious examples. The calculator doesn't send any notifications in real life as far as I know. Now let's shift to the notifications that are OK to send. They fall into two overarching categories, transactional and non-transactional. I know transactional is a loaded term, especially in the tech industry. But here, we're borrowing a term from the bulk email industry, and we're using it to refer to a notification that clearly meets the user's primary goal, stay on top of my life. Non-transactional notifications are OK to send, too. But their value is less certain because they are not clearly meeting the user's primary goal. So how do you know whether a notification is transactional or non-transactional? Run it through this flowchart. Ask these three questions. First, does it enable human-to-human -human interaction? Second, does it help the user function better in their daily life? And finally, does it control or resolve a temporary device state? If the answer to any of these three is yes, it's transactional. Otherwise, it's non-transactional. Examples will help, so let's think of some. First, what's an example of a notification that enables human-to-human -human interaction? Well, here's a few, incoming call, text, or your move in a multiplayer game. How about helps user function better in daily life? Here's some, an alarm, a calendar reminder, a flight delay notification, and a driving direction. Finally, controls or resolves a temporary device state. Some examples are ongoing call, timer counting down, and music playing. I'm going to spend more time talking about non-transactional notifications because those are the trickier ones. Some may love them, some may hate them, or anywhere in between. 
You're not going to please all of your users, but that shouldn't stop you. You just need to take extra care in how you approach them. Because you don't know whether a user will be receptive to them, you should always make your non-transactional notifications optional. You can do this in one of two ways. First, there's opt-out. Send notifications without asking users beforehand, but give them a way to decline receiving them in the future. You'll reach all of your users, but you can't be certain how they'll feel about receiving these unsolicited. Users who find this practice to be in poor taste might roll their eyes and ignore them. Users who are more bent out of shape could block all future notifications from your app, give your app a bad review, or uninstall it. The second way is opt-in. This is a more conservative approach. Here, you explicitly ask users before sending any notifications. You won't be sending to as many users, but the users who get them are more likely to be receptive because they gave the OK. Here's an example of each. On the left is a notification that was sent without asking first, but there's an Options button here that navigates to a place in the app where the user can opt out. On the right is a card that appears on a key screen in an app asking the user if they want to receive notifications. How do you decide whether to go opt out or opt in? I'll share Android's rule of thumb with you. But before I do, I'll admit that it's more biased in favor of users than app teams. We want app teams to succeed, but not at the cost of diluting the perceived value of Android's notification system. If it's coming across as too spammy, that's not only bad for users, it's bad for Android. So here's our rule of thumb. You should only take the opt-out approach if there's clear value for the user and it's contextually relevant for the user. Otherwise, if there's not both value and context, make it opt-in. And if there's neither, don't bother sending it at all. Let's try this value context analysis on for size with a few examples. First, a notification that provides a random tip on how to use the app. What's the value of this notification? It provides a tip on how to use the app. And how about the context? Well, it's random. That's kind of the exact opposite of contextually relevant. So we should make these notifications opt in. Let's do another one, a notification that prompts the user to rate content recently used in the app. Here's some context. Content was recently used in the app. But what about the value? Well, it prompts the user to rate. It's asking them to do work. That work might have a sliver of benefit for all the app's users down the line, but there's no concrete value at this moment to the user. So we should make these notifications opt in. The next thing I'd like to cover is interruptions. Whenever you design an Android notification, your job is not just to specify what it will say, how it will look, and what actions to include, but also the manner in which it will be delivered. The way you do that is to specify a priority level. Android has five levels, which range from min to max. I'll describe each of them with an analogy. Min is leave on the porch. Low is slide under the door. Default is knock on the door. High is walk in the door. And max is barge in the door. Let's map the priority levels and analogy to how a notification is delivered in Android. I won't read all of this to you, but as you see, the higher the level, the more interruptive it can be. Here's one good example for each. Max is like your morning alarm. It's so important, it's going to wake up the screen if it's off. Hi, text message. You can see who wants to chat with you without having to step away from your current screen. Default, an upcoming road closure. It makes a sound without peeking onto your screen, but you see the map icon in the status bar, so you have a sense of where that sound came from. You swipe to get to your notification drawer to see the details. Low, new animation created from your library. The only interruption you get is an icon in the status bar, no sound. You swipe to the notification when you're ready to get it. And finally, min, current weather if it's normal. It's background info that you might like to see, but it doesn't need to interrupt you in any way, shape, or form. It can wait until you decide to look at your notifications. If your notification is default or higher, then you have the option of making a sound. You don't have to, but you can. Here's Android's guidance on whether to make a sound. You'll see it's biased more towards the user's primary goal than the app team's primary goal. Again, this is to protect the Android notification system from being perceived as too spammy. The rule of thumb is, if the user doesn't need to know about this right now, or didn't explicitly ask for sound, then keep it silent. If you're worried that by the time a user sees your silent notification, it will be stale, don't worry. They'll see it soon enough, and at a moment when they're ready to switch tasks. In summary, the user's primary goal is stay on top of my life. 
Transactional notifications meet that goal. Non-transactional notifications do not meet that goal, so they should be optional. And they should be opt-in unless they're clearly providing both value and context. Use the door analogy to guide your decisions about priority level. And finally, keep it silent unless the user must know at this very second or they asked for sound. All of this information and more can be found in the material design guidelines. Check out the pattern for notifications. Thanks for watching.